From toys, tools, and water bottles, a lot of items have small little plastic loops that allow you to connect a keychain to them or some other type of tassel. But in this video, we're gonna go through how you can actually design them for mass production 3D printing because most of the time, people do it wrong. So it is super common to design some sort of loop for a cap or other sort of attachment on a product that you might be working on. And most people generally design those loops like this, where it is parallel to the flow of the cap itself so that you have a hole going through this direction that the keychain then attaches through. But the problem with this is when you are 3D printing an option like this, is that the nozzle has to move from here over to the outer edge. And when you do that, you create these layer lines that are very easy to snap off. This is not as durable as it could potentially be and not as durable as when it's made with some other options. But this is not the best way of making that. If you were to mass produce a cap like this, rather than having the loop on the side be like this and then optimizing it, rounding it out, blending it into the part as much as you can, instead, you would actually make that loop horizontal so that it comes through the part like this. This way you have everything in the layer planes and it's a continuous loop that is interconnected with everything else. This is as strong as any sort of other plastic part. So you can take this loop. This is the very simple, most basic version of it for replacing this traditional kind of perpendicular loop but then you can take it and expand it and push it. You can make it larger so that it becomes basically a finger hold rather than just a keychain hold. You can make it thicker and wider and fatter and bigger and smaller. This is a very, very useful core feature that can be used in almost any of these applications and is super, super useful while still also being extremely durable. But you can see that this loop is perfectly flush with the top of the cap and that is so it can be printed on the bed like this. But sometimes you don't want to print the cap like that. Sometimes you wanna print it like this. But in that case, you would then have support material underneath this loop, which is a part that you do not want. You want to eliminate supports in order to reduce cost of processing and cost of the part. So in order to do that, what you would do is you would actually make the loop a little bit thicker and then apply a chamfer to the bottom of it. Now this part can be printed like this and it has no supports whatsoever, but you still have the same basic function and basic loop. And then you can expand it, contract it, make it bigger, thicker, however you want to, just as you could with the traditional simple one. But that is making a regular loop kind of inspired by the old way of doing things. But we are using mass production 3D printing. With mass production printing, you have a lot more options about what you can actually make because you can create impossible geometries that were never really possible before. So with that in mind, you can start looking at these types of connectors where they actually embed into the part and curve and snake through. These sort of connectors are super useful because they allow you to embed it in the part so that the profile doesn't change and you don't have some wart sticking out the side of your part. And since it's in the plane, it's still exceptionally strong. And then of course, if you have just one of them, you can add in more so that you have an omnidirectional points of connection without adding any extra cost. If this was to be traditionally manufactured, then you would radically increase the cost of your tooling by adding in these extra holes, which is why so often you only have the one. But there are cases where you want many. So you can expand this as much as you want to because this added geometry does not add extra cost but you can take this even further. These are cutting through basically diagonally through the corner of the part, but if you wanna do a tassel or something else that is very flush and very consumer focused, then you might do something like this. This looks like two holes, but actually this is a loop going through into the part and then coming back out. This is something that you could push a paracord through or anything else so that you have a very good strong fit, but also a very flush kind of a fitting and a very smooth connection on the inside so that you do not fray or wear on whatever the clasp or the tassel or the rope or string happens to be. So this is probably one of the most difficult to do with traditional manufacturing because it's actually an impossible geometry. So those are kind of the basic options for how to design a keychain clasp with mass production 3D printing in mind. The most basic is to just make sure that you make the loops in plane with the cap that you're actually doing or whatever the object happens to be. 
But then long term, you can go into more complex kind of connectors that can go around square containers and anything else or almost scale this up to the full size of a handle and still have the same functionality or even do impossible kind of internal geometries that can't really be done any other way. So now you can create a product that was never possible before to truly differentiate what you're manufacturing from what everybody else has ever manufactured. Mass production 3D printing can do it at the same scale and cost as basically any other process, but you have to design for this new process. And then you can also take full advantage of it to create something that's completely new. Have a great day, everybody.